Hey there, I'm Joshua Johnson, and the nightlight is on. Glad to have you here as we talk about government. How do you hold Congress accountable? How do you know what they're up to? How do you know what they're talking about? How do you know what's happening at the Capitol? I know it can seem like government is just a black box where no information gets out and nothing but stupidity ever goes in or out. And that's kind of true, but not entirely true. Keeping track of what government is doing is not as hard as it seems. You just got to know where to look. This episode was part of a YouTube live stream. You can subscribe to that channel and click the notification bell to find out about upcoming streams and episodes. I'm on YouTube at Nightlight Joshua. I love the fact that more people are more skeptical of and critical of government these days. I think that that's not a bad impulse to have. We don't have to just take what we're told at face value. We should be asking smart questions. We should be trying to understand things for ourselves. There's a Bible verse that says, in all you're getting, get understanding. I like that idea, that I don't just want to be handed something. I want to understand it, even if I don't understand everything about it. The more I understand it, the more I can trust it. That's also a double-edged sword. Today, Philip Bump put out a piece in the Washington Post about doing your own research. You know how people say, do your own research. Don't just believe what I have to say. Do your own research. That depends on what kind of research you're doing. He cites a recently released study that came from the University of Central Florida, NYU, and Stanford about people doing their own research on the internet. And what they found, perhaps is not surprising, quoting from the research, they find... When individuals search online about misinformation, they are more likely to be exposed to lower quality information than when individuals search about true news. And, quote, those who are exposed to low quality information are more likely to believe false and misleading news stories to be true relative to those who are not, unquote. So it's kind of garbage in, garbage out. And I think also this is the problem with searching online for anything, because you are in an environment that is about bringing you the links you are most likely to click, to click on. So Google and YouTube and TikTok and all of the other Twitter and all the other sites you go to for information are not going to send you links that contradict what you would probably like. That's how those algorithms work, because you're more likely to click things that reaffirm what you already think. It's classic confirmation bias. So how do you search for things related particularly to our government that are useful and that are not deceptive? I would go to the source. If you want to understand what's happening with Congress, for example, go do your research with Congress. Now, that doesn't mean you have to fly to Washington and go down Constitution Avenue and on somebody's office door and say, can you show me the book of Congress, please? Can I see the Congress book? That is not what we're asking for. But that Congress book is online. And there's a lot of other stuff online, too. And I think that it is high time. You're old enough now. You seem responsible. I'm giving you the keys to the Internet. Drive it carefully. Bring it back in one piece. Don't scratch it. And I want to show you how to drive through information online so that you can know for yourself what the government is doing. The questions you're asking about how things are spent and why did they make this decision and what's going on and who does this and where is this person today and what are they talking about? Completely valid questions. They also have their own answers. And I think in addition to improving the way we do journalism in this country, we also need to improve the way we do education in this country and do knowledge in this country. And you can do that for yourself while people like me work on improving the journalism side. So let's talk about your part in this relationship, not just, oh, the media needs to be better. Well, okay, well, we're working on that. What you doing? You going to help? Or are you just going to sit there and piss and moan from the back of the classroom? Or are you actually going to do the homework? I think you can do the homework, and it's not as hard as you might think. Let's start just with something that is coming around the corner right now, which is that we are facing <laughs> the possibility of yet another government shutdown. Yay. Here's a piece from Punchbowl News that came out on Monday on Martin Luther King Jr. Day referring to a stopgap funding bill that House and Senate leaders released 
on Sunday night. It would expend the government's spending authority until March 1st and March 8th. It's in two parts because there are different parts to the way that these bills are written. So if there was a government shutdown, it would shut down in parts, not like every federal function would cease to happen. It would happen in bits and pieces. So you go to this link. There's a link, stopgap funding bill. That's got a hyperlink. You click that and you get the text of this bill, HR 2872. Okay, so here's the text of the bill. What do I do with this? What you do is you go to one of the best websites on earth. I'm telling you, this is one of my favorites. If you wanna look like a, tr like a G, when you're looking at government information, if you wanna look like the most insidery insider or just win a few beers at the bar, this is a website you need to go. What website do you go to to look up what Congress is doing? Congress.gov. <laughs> it is actually that simple. This site is so damn useful. Congress.gov. Let me, let, me, let me show you around. Let me give you a little tour of this wonderful website. First of all, because it is a .gov website, that means it is an actual official U.S. government site. All official U.S. government sites at this level end with .gov. Congress.gov is basically a search engine for Congress. You can type anything in up here and get all kinds of information on the current Congress. You can search every Congress, like every one ever. You can make it specific to legislation, materials that committees have considered for committee hearings, or the big book O Congress, which is called the Congressional Record. That's the book that lists everything, everything that goes on every day at Congress. It also shows you the most viewed bills, the legislation that other people are searching for the most often. The biggest one is the National Defense Authorization Act. That's the military budget bill. There's one called the Disease X Act, which would put funding into finding the next pandemic before it happens. You can search bills by their sponsor, by when they were introduced. You can search the status of appropriations, which is government spending, and on and on and on. Scroll down a little further. What's Congress doing? Here's the House of Representatives. Click right here. You can get the live video of what's going on at the U.S. House. Right now, they're in recess. And it says right here, underneath the play window, last floor action, the speaker announced that the House do now recess. The next meeting is subject to the call of the chair. So they're in recess until the speaker reconvenes the House. Well, what were they doing before? Here's a list of everything that happened right next to the video window. This is the, what they've done today. 207, rule provides for consideration of, there's this bill. 202, approving the journal agreed to by voice vote. 130, House convened returning from a recess, continuing the legislative day. 1203, one minute speeches. All the way, 12 o'clock, today's prayer was offered by the House chaplain, Chaplain Margaret Grunkiven. You can see everything that they've done today. And this is put together by the clerk of the House of the Representatives. One other thing to bear in mind, the information here is not coming from the members of Congress themselves. It's coming from Congress, from the institution of the clerks of Congress. It's almost the difference between getting information from the hotel manager and from the hotel's guests, right? They're both maybe staff, like if you're a high profile guest, but you want it from the institution. This comes from the institution of Congress, not controlled by the parties and not controlled directly by the members. So this is a different kind of information than you would get in some other places. There are also some links to make life a little easier to search through things kind of quickly. You can look at what happened yesterday in Congress, the text of pending bills, the schedules of committees, and the reports from committees. They're all listed right here under, you can see it right at the top of the webpage, below the search panel, scroll down a little bit, you have another list of links that says recent. That's what all this is. There's one big daily digest of everything that happens called the Congressional Record. It's basically what all did Congress do today. This is an official document that goes all the way back to the beginning of Congress. And you can search the congressional records going back as far as 1873 on this website. Further back, you might have to go through some old dusty volumes and crack them open. But the Daily Digest, the measures that were introduced, there were six bills, and it lists what the bills were. Measures from the House, executive communications, which would be messages that come from the White House to Congress. Two record votes were taken today. Senate convened at 3, adjourned at 9, 10 p.m. 
until today at 11 a.m. This is all Eastern time, of course. So you can look through the congressional record and see, what is my government doing? There's a list. This is a list of everything that happened yesterday. You can also search through the committee meetings that are happening. 2 p.m., House Veterans Affairs Subcommittee on Oversight and Investigations. Click that. What's the hearing about? Here's the information. VA revolving fund, revolving funds. Are veterans being shortchanged? Question mark. And it will list who the witnesses are, their biographies, their testimony, their written testimony, supporting documentation, the notice of the hearing, which is when they say this hearing will be held on this date at this time at this place about this topic. Here's who's going to be testifying. This is where all this preliminary information is. The website for the committee. The video of the proceeding will show up here after the hearing is over. So all of this information is very easily searchable, and it's all right there on the surface. You do not have to dig for any of this. The other nice thing about Congress.gov is that if you're just not sure about all of the, the ins and outs of government, this is kind of an easy place to go get information. There's an annotated constitution here that explains the United States Constitution, the text of it, the way it was brought together, and even some featured issues. For example, we were talking a lot about the 14th Amendment to the Constitution recently as it relates to Donald Trump. They have features here about the disqualification of a candidate on that basis. It's two parts, at least so far. Click right there, takes you to a report about the disqualification of a candidate for the presidency. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. If you want to look like a congressional insider, this is hack number one. You have to have this in your back pocket. That link I showed you from constitution.congress.gov. That's the Congress's own page explaining the Constitution. And again, this is a page that is maintained by the institution of Congress, not by the members themselves. So this page is updated regardless of what party is in power. So I click that link. It opened this other report from the Congressional Research Service. Well, who the hell is the Congressional Research Service? If a member of Congress wants to learn more about a subject for the sake of making legislation or even just advocating a policy, they can go to the Congressional Research Service and say, I want to know about X. Research X. And so the Congressional Research Service, which again, this is congressional staff, not political staff, they will go off and get information and compile it into a report and say, here's a quick primer on the subject you asked us for. It is the research arm of Congress, just like the name says. So when this was coming up about whether Donald Trump is allowed to even be president again under the, excuse me, under the 14th Amendment, that's the Congressional Research Service's job. And in a document of eight pages, you can become an expert in this. And the thing is, they do these on a lot of different subjects. So you, let me show you how to search. And again, if you, if you want to look like a genius on any complex topic, that's a matter of policy or law or government or, or making a new law or what is the country going to do, go to the Congressional Research Service. This is a really easy way to become an instant expert. If you want to be an instant expert, this is the way you do it. Suppose you want to learn about border security. Congressional Research Service. You can find it either from the homepage on congress.gov. It's right. Hang on, I just had the link handy. Here we go. You can look under search CRS reports, or you go to crsreports.congress.gov. Suppose you want to learn about border security. Border security. Search. It will bring you back a whole bunch of reports about border security, including one called U.S. Customs and Border Protection's Powers and Limitations, a primer. This is your five-page summary of what Customs and Border Protection does and doesn't do. And it's got the date right at the top. So, okay, updated November 30th, 2021. Do you want something more recent? Go back, search by date. Boop. And then everything related to borders pops up. Russia's war on Ukraine, U.S. policy and the role of Congress, Israel and Hamas conflict in brief, 
U.S. Policy and Options for Congress. This is a 16-page summary updated last week with everything you basically need to know about the conflicts, the location, the players, U.S. policy, possible potential post-conflict scenarios, it's all in there. This is the information that your members of Congress are using to make their own decisions. So if you want to understand what they're being told, and you want to advocate something different, or even if you want to support what they're trying to do, this is how you inform yourself, because this is how they can inform themselves. Now, does every member of Congress read all of these reports? I wish they did. But is this an easy way for you to not feel like, oh my God, it doesn't make any sense. Yes, you are paying for this. These are your tax dollars at work. And it's a really amazingly useful website. There is so much information in here, it's startling. One more site you should know about. What about how the government uses our money? Who can help us with that? There's another website you should know about, an agency called the Congressional Budget Office. This is another analytical agency that helps Congress. Now, the Congressional Research Service is different. CRS is more about researching topics. Tell me what I need to know about X. And then CRS puts together a report, all of which are written in very plain English, and most of which are pretty brief. But what about researching a bill? Like, what is this bill going to do? And how much is this going to cost? That's the job of the Congressional Budget Office. They do analysis of legislation, pending legislation. They also do analysis of broader topics. So when you look at a bill, you can see on that bill, often there will be a CBO analysis that says this bill will cost this much money over this much time. This bill will do these things and needs to be approved because there are laws on how this money is used or that money is used, and it'll just lay it all out. CBO also does other reports just about the economy in general. Right now, they have a report called The Current View of the Economy from 2023 to 2025. So it's a projection of what we think the US economy will do in the next few years. There's one here about a monthly budget review of the U.S. budget. There's also a report about how accurate their own projections are. So the Congressional Budget Office grades itself to say, this is what we projected, this is what ac actually happened, and we can refine our models. They're constantly working to update that. Also a report on the distribution of household income in 2020. This is how household income was affected by COVID, by the pandemic. There's a scary amount of information here but we're talking about a government shutdown before, right? So let's go back to that, to our example. You see the piece, Punchbowl News. You've got this article from Punchbowl, and then oh, they move forward. Hang on one second, let me get back to that link. I had the link, it was working perfectly until you touched it. Hang on, let me find this link. Give me just one second. Well, here, let me let me find it from somewhere else because I think we can still make that work. Actually, better way to find it. Better way to find it. We go up to congress.gov. Sorry, one second. And I'm going to look for one of the other things that you can do with congress.gov is look at the individuals in your government. For example, if you're trying to figure out, hang on one second, let me just find the website, who your members of the House are. You can go to house.gov. That's the main page for the U.S. House. That is a consistent page that remains there at all times, house.gov. Well, who are your members? Click representatives, it gives you a list of everybody. Who's in charge? Click leadership, it gives you a list of everybody. And a lot of these pages don't change. So Mike Johnson is now the Speaker of the House. Kevin McCarthy got booted. What's his website? Speaker.gov. That will be the website for him and for whoever the next House Speaker is, however long they may last. Also, other similar roles. The Democratic Leader of the House is currently Co Senator ha Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, Democrat from New York. His website, Democratic Leader dot house dot gov. So a lot of these pages, if you just want to see 
kind of what's going on with these various leadership roles, it's the same page. The page just changes as the players change, but the page is still there. Majority leader, majority whip, Republican conference chair, the Democratic whip, and, and on and on. On the Senate side, go to U.S. Senate, you can click senators, and it will tell you who all the senators are. But then there's this other link. See this one that says facts and milestones? If you go to, United, if you go to senate.gov and click senators at the top, there's a sub menu that says facts and milestones. This one gives you factoids about kinds of senators. So for example, how many African-American senators are there? There's a link, African-American senators, and it will give you the name of every African-American senator in the history of the Senate, starting with Hiram Revels, who was the first one, who was a Republican from Mississippi, and going all the way now to LaFonza Butler, who was a senator from California, who filled the seat of the late Senator Dianne Feinstein. So right now, there are four black senators in the U.S. Senate, Tim Scott, Cory Booker, Raphael Warnock, and LaFonza Butler. What about senators who are Marines, who served in the U.S. Marine Corps? Here's a list. We have three senators right now who were United States Marines, Richard Blumenthal, Dan Sullivan, and Todd Young, presently. This is great if you, for example, have an issue that you want to get attention on and you want to try to find members of the U.S. Senate who have something in common with you. Maybe you're looking for people who are physicians because you have a healthcare-related issue. There are four physicians currently serving the U.S. Senate, Roger Marshall, Bill Cassidy, Rand Paul, and John Barrasso. Suppose you are looking for senators who won the Nobel Peace Prize. There's none in the Senate right now, but there have been five. The most recent one was Al Gore from Tennessee. He won, the Senate, he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 2007. So there's all kinds of information you can use if you just are like, what can I, who can I put this issue to? Who can I talk to who might have an idea of what I'm thinking about? Senators who are American Indian, senators who are foreign born. How many foreign born senators are there? I mean, this is, right now, you've got Chris Van Hollen, born in Pakistan, currently a serving senator. So it's, it's a huge trove of information. Let me try to get back to this link from Punchbowl that betrayed me when I needed it. There we go. All right, let's get back to this Punchbowl link. So you got the link from Punchbowl, stopgap funding bill. You click it. HR 2872, HR stands for House Resolution. Go to congress.gov, 2872. Search bar at the top, HR, 2872, enter. Scroll down a little ways, as soon as I find my mouse. There it is. House Resolution 2872, 118th Congress. This is the current Congress. And then you click that, and it shows you the bill. To amend the Permanent Electronic Duck Stamp Act of 2013 to allow the Secretary of the Interior to issue electronic stamps under such act and for other purpose. What? Permanent Electronic Duck Stamp Act? What the hell? Uh, but don't lose hope. Here's what you got to do. Under this page that shows you the legislation, you see the overview the bill's sponsor, Garrett Graves, congressman from Louisiana, the committees it's before, natural resources. When the committee met, reports on that. There is a Congressional Budget Office cost estimate, which is under the more on this bill section. You click that, you'll get that. What's the last thing that happened on this? The Senate yesterday invoked cloture on the motion to proceed to the measure. So it's a procedural vote. How did they vote? Here's the record number, and you can see how the vote went right here. Everything related to this bill is on this page. Where's the piece about budget? You can read the whole text of the bill here, and you can hear under amendments, see that it was amended yesterday. Senator Patty Murray, Democrat from Washington, submitted the amendment, it's under her name, yesterday's date, view text. Scroll down, and you can see here the Continuing Appropriations Act 2024 within the bill right here. 
there it is. Now this language is arcane, so it helps to have a summary, a CBO analysis, a report on the bill, but here it is. Striking the date specified in the previous bill and inserting March 8th and March 1st. Those are the new deadlines if this bill passes. This is how we know that if this bill passed, it would move the funding deadline back to March 1st and March 8th. That's how we know it because it's written in the bill. Changes the funding level from $663 billion to $2.199 billion. That's the increased funding, the extended funding to keep paying for the government. It's all in this bill. This is the hard way to understand the bill, but this is the way to verify what's in the news report. You can look at it in the bill. It's all here. None of this is as hidden as people would like to believe. It is challenging because there's a lot to wade through. But if you know where to look, it's not that hard. There's not that much missing. And there's a huge amount of information you can just kind of grab off of the web if you know where to look for it. So, oh, one more thing. One more thing that everyone should be, will probably be burning up quite a bit. So, the bill, again, HR 2872. One more great place to look. If you get law, if all else fails, congress.gov, and if all else fails, C-SPAN. Go to cspan.org. It's an excellent place. They record everything. And if I search HR 2872, what do I get? The session of the Senate where they talked about this bill today. Click. Five hours ago. And C-SPAN has labeled it. The Senate will continue work on a temporary spending bill funding the federal government past Friday's midnight deadline in two stages, to March 1st and March 8th to avert a shutdown. If they're live in session, you can watch it live right here. You can also create video clips that are free to use that you can embed on a website or share to someone else. So suppose you wanted to say to somebody, oh yeah, that thing we were talking about, they talked about that in the Senate today. Here's what so-and-so said. You can go to C-SPAN and make your own clip. If you have a cspan.org account, and that's c-span.org, you can make your own clips and save them. And then go right down here. What's that bill number again? I forgot it just that quick. 2872. 2872 in the transcript. There it is right there. And once you watch an ad, which takes a few seconds, then you can go right into C-SPAN. President Pro Temper. Under the previous order, the leadership time there they are. is reserved. Talking about the bill. Morning business is under the previous order. The Senate will resume consideration of the motion to proceed to H.R. 2872, which the clerk will report. There's the bill. Proceed. Found it. C-SPAN. Just like that. I totally respect that people feel a need to put very tight controls on government. That's why our revolution happened, right? That's why we founded this country. And I totally get the skepticism about what government is telling you and what you can learn about what's happening and what people will reveal and what they won't tell you. That's all very fair. No one does this alone. But I think we're going to get farther faster in the work of trying to improve government and make government more accountable if we all do it together. Don't just offload this to the media, right? Don't just offload this to Washington. Don't offload this to anybody. Don't offload any of the work of democracy on anyone else but you. You do your part by remaining an educated voter, an educated citizen. I'll do my part by being a journalist who keeps trying to improve his work. And somewhere in the middle, together, we'll get farther faster. But it's no one person's job. There is a piece of this you can do for yourself. And I don't need nobody to do nothing for me that I can do for myself. I will continue to bring you more of these if these are useful. And I hope that you find this useful. I see Skylar the writer, I see your comment saying this is a nifty little website. This is what I wish politicians would show their constituents since civics classes aren't standard in schools. Skylar, I hear you on that. I do wish they would talk more about that too. But hey, I will talk more about this. There are other sites as well that will give you a deeper look at every corner of the US government. I'm going to put together another one of these on administration websites, so department websites, the Supreme Court, the budget, 
the national debt. There's a lot of information out there, probably more information than you want. And then just other parts of the government that I think you should know about and know how to dig through that. If you have ideas for what you'd like to see more of, let me know, write it in the comments, get in touch with me, send me an email. If you have ideas, I'd be happy to help walk you through this. Or if there's any of this that didn't quite make sense or you could use a little more clarity on, let me know, I'd be happy to help you out. But you know, you should have access to all this information. You should absolutely be able to learn all these things that I learn. And a lot of what reporters do is just knowing where to find something that most people don't know how to find. And now you do. Well, thank you for listening. If you wouldn't mind, would you please write a review of this episode? That'll tell me what you thought of it and it'll help other people find the show too. Remember to follow me on YouTube at Nightlight Joshua. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitch, Threads, Facebook, Substack, and you can check out the merch in my online store. All those links are online at nightlightjoshua.com. So until we meet again, I'm Joshua Johnson. Thank you so much for making time for me. And please keep on shining because someone somewhere needs your light right now. How will you follow the election without losing your mind? 2024 is going to take a lot out of us. We need space to connect, vent, ask questions, and share ideas without judgment. The nightlight is your sanity saver in these hectic times, but it can only keep going if you do your part. So show your support as a paid subscriber. Sign up now on Apple Podcasts, or if you prefer another app, click the link in this episode's description. Look, we're going to be drowning in politics for the next year, and it's going to get ugly. Err. You deserve some place free from that ugliness, a place where everyone is welcome, where there's more to life than polls and pundits. Corporate media is not going to meet this need for us. And I should know, I used to work there. But I like it right here, answering to you, giving you my analysis and perspective on the things you want to talk about. Some of your fellow listeners have already shown their financial support. Without them, you would not be hearing me right now. As paid subscribers, they're getting uplifting nonpartisan analysis on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That's about six hours a week. Free listeners only hear me on weekends for 90 minutes or so. Subscribers also get a monthly Ask Me Anything live stream and discounts on Nightlight merch. So come on, let's keep each other sane in 2024. And let's have conversations that help us get on with life, not make us hide under the bed. Become a paid subscriber of The Nightlight. Sign up on Apple Podcasts or click the link in the description if you prefer another app. Thanks. Thanks.